Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps RC. I'm back from my three week vacation and in the studio is a bunch of new stuff to review. So we're gonna do a review and flight test of this. This is from banggood.com. They sent us this for review. So thanks a lot, Banggood. This is the Cheerson CX32. It's a new design. It has a bunch of new features on it. It has auto takeoff and auto land by one button, super cool. Comes with a camera. You can take photos and video with this. It's running on 2.4 gigahertz. Um, and also some other features on here are frequency point switching, which essentially means that it has six channels on the FPV monitor, and you can switch back and forth between frequencies to find a better signal. If you have an interruption in your area, that's really useful if you fly near uh, larger neighborhoods where there's a lot of interference. So we can switch channels now with this one. Very nice. There are uh, four AAA batteries that go in the monitor and four AA batteries that go in the transmitter itself. So let's go ahead now, let's open up this box for you and show you what's included. Okay guys, here it is, the CX32 Falcon. It's running on 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz for your FPV. It does feature six channels that you can switch back and forth in case you have interruption of your frequency from your video coming back from your copter to your monitor. Very, very cool feature. So it's got a lot of new, really cool stuff uh, in this copter. One key takeoff and land as well. I don't see that this one does flips like some of the other ones, but these other new modes are really nice. It also has a self-centering stick, which is super nice because like the Phantom style copters, if you let go of the throttle, the stick goes back to the middle, which helps it maintain its throttle it's, it's idle throttle and it maintains altitude while it's flying, so that's super cool. Um, the monitor is already attached to this. You don't need to screw any of this on or put any parts together for the FPV monitor. It takes four, see what these uh, AA or AAA batteries in the back of the monitor. I'd like to see a rechargeable battery in this uh, via USB like some of the other ones have. Not a huge deal, but I'm gonna have to get some rechargeables for this monitor. Uh, channel switch button is right in the middle, so you can change your channel and if you have frequency interruption. Uh, on switch is in the very middle. You can select mode one or mode two. Super cool that you can do that. It has two keys on the right hand side which feature an arrow that faces up and an arrow that faces down. These are your auto takeoff and auto land buttons. On the top left, it has a frequency button which you can also switch frequency on there to make sure that you have a good connection. Um, it does do photo stills and video as well with the included HD camera. Next up, we have prop guards. It includes the prop guards, you can use those if you're a new guy and you don't wanna break your props out on the first day. If you crash in the grass, it's nice to have those on. Go ahead and do that. It does have the camera already installed on the bottom here and it's ready to go for your first flight. It includes an English instruction manual. You can go through this, check out if you're a first time flyer, if this is your, your first larger size quad, uh, something step up from a, like a palm size quad, make sure you read the manual. There's a lot of really cool features in this. Um, you know, like we said, it has full FPV, it has 2.4 gigahertz, so if you guys are new to that, 2.4 lets you go a little further than this infrared controllers like uh, come with a lot of toys so this is a step above that well above that much better range it comes with a 2s 7.4 volt and it's a 450 milliamp hour battery that will go up inside here it is installed already when you you get the copter i wanted to give you a note really quickly when you take this hatch off be a little bit careful because i did separate and break the back side of the gimbal when i was trying to release the hatch uh, it has to come back a little bit um, and there's a slot here that has to line up with the tooth on the trapdoor and then it'll come up and out like so. So you can put your battery in and out. You put your battery in and you plug in the connector here right into the copter uh, and you're ready to go. So we'll put the battery in. I'll show you what's in the accessory pack real quick. They include two props with this. I would like to see four included with some of these copters. I think, you know, it's, it's a better value when we get four, four extra props. Because some of us do break quite a few props. 
You have your USB charger and balance lead on the other end for your battery. This is for charging your battery. Uh, it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to charge that battery. And here are your two props. Two props that come along with it. These are slightly, they are quite smaller, about half the size of the, uh, the SEMA X8C, which we have over here to the side. I'm gonna compare a size for you in just a minute. And it has two little tiny, what look to be like little black caps. And what these are is these are extra caps for the top of your motor. So if one pops off during mid-flight, you have a couple extra spares. That's kind of nice. You have two different size screwdrivers with this. One is for the landing gear and the smaller screws on the bottom if you need to take that off for transport. Or if you just want to remove the landing gear and fly it without that, you can do that. And this larger screwdriver is for the back of the transmitter and for replacing your props, putting on a new prop. So let's go ahead and put these back in the box. I'll put some batteries in the transmitter and we'll go out to the field and we'll do a flight test. Now as a quick bonus, I wanted to show you before we fly, I wanted you to show, the, show you the difference at the size and the scale of the SEMA, uh, one of the very popular SEMA, the X8C, next to the CX32 over here. It is quite a bit larger. I did put some Phantom 2 landing gear on here because we're going to try to put a GoPro gimbal on the bottom of the SEMA. Uh, but this is an excellent copter, the CX32. It's a little smaller but I got to fly it earlier and it really does fly like a larger size copter or something like the SEMA. It's very, very stable. Um, it doesn't have two separate modes on it, which I would like to see it have two separate modes and make it go a little faster, uh, but it really does fly super, super smooth. So let's go out now and let's go ahead and do a test flight of the CX-32. Okay guys, here we go. I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps RC. We have the CX-32 here to demo today for you. I'm gonna do a little flight test. The video is moving around a little bit. We're gonna try to clean that up. You wanna pull this wire out to the side on the bottom so that it's kinda hanging out. It gives you a little better signal boost when you're out there quite a ways. I did notice this morning when I, when I flew this, when I flew it close to the ground, kinda far away, I was having some video blackout. So you want to be aware of that when you're flying this one. Um, CX-32 does like to be quite high in the air and uh, you get a better signal that way to your video feed. So let's go ahead and do a demo flight. Okay, let's go ahead and take off now. It does feature that auto takeoff. So if you press that top button, it'll go ahead and take off. Top right button and it also does auto lands. So if you press the top left and it should go down and land, you can control the pitch and the yaw on the way down. So there it landed itself, pretty cool. It does remain at the idle for a second and cut itself off. We'll go ahead and do a auto takeoff. Almost got caught in the grass. It doesn't have the tallest landing gear. However, like I said, this one is a super stable flyer. There's quite a bit of wind right now, so I don't really want to get too far out. I'm gonna give it full throttle. The yaw works really nice on this one, by the way. Kind of a nice stable yaw, really smooth flyer. This one doesn't have multiple flying modes, so it's not gonna go like super fast, but this is a great one to start out with uh, for FPV. Cause like I said, it is 5.8 gigahertz. And it's actually pretty fast for the size. LEDs on the top and the bottom make it really fun. This has a decent yaw in there. Let's go ahead and start some video real quick. So we should be recording now. You can see the red dot flashing on the screen. Got a couple people out in the field. I won't go too far out, but I would like to range test it. It should fly back into its range. It says in the manual if it flies out of range, it'll try to fly back to home like an auto return to home feature. Um, however, I wouldn't totally trust that, so I'd keep this one kind of close in. You can fly it way out there, but you might risk losing your quad if you do that, so. You can take it up a little higher. And like I said, this one has the auto level mode, so if you let go of the stick, it maintains its altitude. You can see how it's drifting though, so it doesn't 
have like a GPS lock type positioning on it, but it does maintain altitude. So if I let go of the throttle, it will stay in one spot uh, as far as its, its vertical position. But like I said, very nice flying quad. Very, very, very docile. This is a great one to start out with. Like this one's probably a good size in between like a SEMA X8C uh, and something smaller. This one does not do flips. It doesn't have a flip feature on it. But really cool that it has a frequency switcher. So if you're having issues with your video, you can switch the frequency. So the video just went out. I went to uh, go to a different channel. Can go up to, I believe it's on channel six. There we go. So now you can see the ball field over there. That's pretty cool. We're still recording video. I could fly up and over these trees for a second. I'm wondering how it does uh, as far as being on the other side of the trees. I wonder if it'll lose signal. It kind of fly it over here just a little bit beyond the tree and bring it down and back around. Coming down, gonna spin around back toward myself again. Try not to fly into the tree. Coming down. Lost video feed there for a second. It's really having a hard time coming down. It really doesn't want to come down. Super light quad. Trying to get it down before I fly into the tree. Okay, cool. Gonna fly uh, under the tree real quick. And this one's fun. I really would like to try to hook up the goggles to this one and fly it around in the park. You see the video feed flickering in and out a little bit there. I'm going to start the video again. And this battery really does last a long time because of the, the weight of the quad. The CX32 is super, super light. So I can kind of see where I'm going here. I'm going to spin around and fly back toward the tree. It's not exactly a racer quad, but it is a lot of fun. You can do some mild FPV with this thing. It's pretty cool. And right now it seems to be moving pretty fast. So I'm going to fly back over here. CX32 is uh, very mild. So I wonder um, wonder how well this would do some sort of a hand toss. I'm not sure uh, if we can really do a hand toss with this one because it does this auto takeoff feature. But um, overall, I really like this quad. It does have the micro SD card slot in the back. You can put whatever type of uh, SD card you want in there, probably up to about 16, 32 gigabyte. It comes with, uh, it, I believe it does come with a two gig. I might be wrong. Um, but I really like this out of the box experience. Everything's ready to go. So just add your batteries in here, charge this one up, and you're ready for some FPV action. Uh, and very relatively, fairly priced. So I had a lot of fun flying this one. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the CX32. Uh, thanks for hanging out. I'm Justin Davis. I'll see you on the next one.